face to face with the cosmic cat, I once said didn't exist. Hello again, thank you for being here with me once more, I hope you are very well today. I am Marie. Welcome to my channel. This information can be seen as science fiction, or as the viewer sees best, and I post it for entertainment purposes only. Still, I take my information very seriously, and for whoever has eyes to see. I am writing this on the late morning and afternoon of October 15, 2024, and I revised it for publishing on the morning of November 3, 2024. As most of you know, my health has been failing lately. It hasn't improved, and, perhaps it is getting worse, as I also have other issues which may or may not be connected to my diagnosed type 1 diabetes, which this ship surgeon, Sane Trey, is treating with a dry med pod. It looks like my diabetes and my other issues have a strong etheric component to them, I mean as coming from the side of the spirits, like some elaborate astral attack. I say this fully knowing that, in the end, all illnesses come from or are generated on the astral side of things, but these illnesses I am going through are starting to look a lot more like a foreign generated astral attack. This is the second part, the continuation of my video, The Irma Healed Me. It is much better if you watch the first video before this one, yet I went back a few lines of the ending part of the first video as an overlapping reminder, so where I continue to narrate here, makes a little bit more sense. Continuing from the first part. And then I started to feel a calming vibration sensation, very nice, and I thought those were healing frequencies coming from the sort of monolith machine I was lying on, but I was wrong. It suddenly came to me that the super pleasant vibration that was surrounding me was coming from the Irma cats themselves, not from a machine. They were all purring, or humming so deeply it was like purring, which I do not know if there is any difference. And I was suddenly invaded, completely overwhelmed by all kinds of emotions, and I started to cry and cry, and cry, with my eyes flowing with tears, as I had not cried for years and years. I closed my eyes at the vibration which I felt was emotionally cleansing me, and then when I opened them, or so I thought, I was alone and upright, standing on my bare feet, on a cold white floor with no features in it. I was alone and in total silence. A silence so deep it made me question my own existence, as it was absolute and unnatural. I felt that I was standing there in the middle of the great nothing. I looked around and I couldn't see anything, as all there was, was white surrounding me, everything was solid white. I turned around several times, trying to decide where I was, and it was here that I noticed that my hair and my dress behaved as if underwater, like in zero gravity, as they flowed with my movement, almost in slow motion. I looked around to try to see where I was again, with a bit of a fright this time, but I still couldn't see anything. I was in a place like no other, if this was even a place, all I could see that was not part of me was the floor and only the one which directly surrounded my bare feet, nothing else, and it looked like uneven opaque ice. And then I wondered what had happened to my shoes. Before I could start to worry about my strange whereabouts, I noticed a pale electric blue light in the distance that was progressively getting stronger and stronger. This little diffused dot of light was growing, and it was the only thing that was not me or the small portion of the floor around my bare feet. All my attention was focused on that light that was slowly getting stronger, and it was in motion as well. Then I started to see a distorted luminous blue figure moving towards me, but I felt no fear, even though I couldn't make out its real shape. It was distorted as if by a mirage inside a dense mist, and all the light where I was, appeared to be coming from that creature now, as the total whiteness turned absolute black, except for the blue light figure. 
Then I felt like I was floating in the air, I could no longer feel the floor under me. I looked down and all I could see was my feet being illuminated by the strange electric blue figure. And then, suddenly, the creature finally arrived where I was. It was an immense luminous blue lion, and its mane was made of blue flames, had piercing white eyes, and it moved with a lot of agility and grace as if it were underwater. I stood there floating, totally paralyzed, yet I could not decide whether I felt fear or not. It moved around me several times, clearly inspecting who and what I was. I have never felt so observed in all my existence, as all the creature's attention was on me. It continued to inspect every part of me with its piercing white eyes, from my toes and hands to my hair, and with the utmost nerve-wracking attention. Then it came to me, face to face. The creature took my little head in between his huge luminous paws, and he moved up to me in silence, facing me directly and at a very short distance. His expression was calm and loving, extremely reassuring, and I started to shiver and cry again, violently. I felt his message, and it was that I should cry all I wanted, as all I was doing was cleansing repressed emotions that were damaging me. He talked to me telepathically, yet I must use words here. He said, interesting, very interesting to see an Irma feline soul living in a frail and tiny Lyrian female body full of problems. What are you doing in there? Tigress, it looks like you certainly wanted an incarnation challenge, but you didn't have to make it so difficult on yourself. You were brought here because you are family, and we take care of our own, even at a spirit level. You are still, and always will be an Irma, and you will eventually come back to us in shape, which is your true one, once your complicated life mission is accomplished. Then I felt his next mental message clearly, he said that I would be perfectly okay, that it was not yet my time to remain in the world of the spirits, and that I would be a successful queen, as I would reign Teigita as long as I would live, and until I died grandmother. Then he continued, inspecting me. It appears that you have a strong etherical attachment to the idea that you lost your life on earth, that all that you would live there was cut short, so you are harboring a lot of repressed sadness and even anger. Your attachment to the life you never could have on earth, makes the troubles you would experience there, filter and cross over from the timelines where you did succeed to live on earth longer, to your present life here. In other words, your ailments are not yours, they belong to other versions of you, who are not you, and to events and situations that you did not live. The Blue Lion continued. You should move away from the idea that your life on earth would have been better, more peaceful, and easier than the life you have today, as your life mission was never to be on earth for long, it always was meant to be lived here. You are also full of resentment because you lost your mother, and you deeply blame yourself, but things happened as they did for a reason, and things couldn't have happened any other way. You should move away from all those thoughts and attachments, now that I just cut all your attachment cords to harmful things, and events coming from other timelines. The Blue Lion continued telepathically, what happens in other timelines is not of your concern, do not carry weights that do not belong to you. I then recognized who he was, he was the same lion as the gigantic dark metal sculpture in the center of the oval Irma room I was in, if I was indeed still there, as I couldn't see anything but the magnificent blue light lion with his mane on fire. He must be the spirit of an ancient Irma king. Who is this etheric blue lion? I asked myself as I continued to cry, also starting to feel that the cosmic cat was indeed a real entity after all. And I can't stop crying and crying while I write these words.
As I briefly closed my eyes while crying, I did not know where the blue lion with his mane on fire went, as I was alone there again, and on the floor, and again I couldn't see anything around me, nothing, I was completely surrounded by misty white light, and I noticed that even my dress moved as if I was underwater again, but I could breathe. And I stood there in complete silence, while I turned around to try to see where I was, when I noticed a yellow house cat some meters away from me, one of those classic orange, striped cats. The cat was resting on his belly, with his front paws curled inwards, and looking directly at me. I said hello little kitty, and he answered with a little meow, opening his little pink mouth. I walked towards the yellow cat, and he got up and moved away from me just a bit, so that I couldn't touch him, and turned around to see me once more. I walked towards the orange cat again, and he started to walk away with his tail upright making a hook as all cats do, and then he turned around to see if I was following him. Okay, I got it, he wanted me to follow him, and so I did, I started to walk with the cat, some two or three meters behind him, and then the white light slowly started to clear, and then suddenly I could start to see where I was again. The mist started to clear to reveal, that I was lying down on a medical bed in Sardeclaire, in the recovery room once more, looking at the stale white and boring box-like room in the infirmary and at its rectangular air vents, so unlike the Irma. I heard an electronic beeping sound and I realized I was back on my ship, and that sound was alerting everyone else that I had awakened. I don't know what happened and what to make out of this, as I have not talked to the Irma since this event, but of course, it just happened. I am deeply shaken and I can't stop crying. I feel this was life changing for me, even when I thought I knew the astral. I don't know who or what that blue lion in flames is, but it does look like I came, face to face, directly with the cosmic cat. I do not know. I feel with no energy and drained, especially emotionally. I do not know what I went through. So many questions, so few answers. All I was told was that the Irma had returned my unconscious body to the Sardeclaire after the, whatever that was, had finished, and they said that I should be allowed to sleep as much as I needed, and that I would wake up, okay. There will be a third part of this incident, coming up shortly, if not directly after this one is published in both languages. This will be all for today. As always, thank you for watching my video, and for liking, sharing, and subscribing for more. It helps this channel grow a lot. And I hope to see you here next time. With much love and appreciation, your friend, Marie Swath.